Welcome learners to our session today. I'm your instructor, CPA Aringo Frederick. So in our class today, my good students, a continuation of our what you are, we've been doing. And remember this concept, you're looking at a cost estimation. And uh, today's class, I want us to look at this concept of learning curve concept, a very important concept and also very common, very, very common when it comes to our examinations, very common when it comes to our examination. So, whenever we are looking at learning curve, ideally, what is a concept that must always click at the back of our mind? So, learning curve ideally is a concept to do with the aspect of uh, talk of uh, maybe uh, skills or experience, efficiency and time. So, you're looking at if a person is very skillful, you'll find that he, to perform a certain task, ideally is going to take a very short time. Compared to this other person probably, who is not experienced, who is not experienced. So, looking at this concept of a learning curve, my good students, as you are saying, you'll find that ideally is the concept revolving around skills and experience. And also the aspect to do with the aspect of uh, efficiency and uh, time. How would these three factors relate to each other? If I'm more experienced, the more efficient I am and the less time I'll be taking in performing, in performing such task. So the main concept that we should grasp here is that Ideally, I'm looking at the concept of what? I'm looking at the concept of time factor. And now relating it to the aspect of cost. Remember, you are still looking at cost estimation. So basically, you'll find that uh, these components, ideally, it will evolve around human. This is a human resource that you'll be looking at most of the cases. And remember, speaking of the human resource at this point, key element that you'll be looking at is what? Labor cost. So ideally the whole concept behind learning curve will find it will be revolving around what? Around labor cost. It will always be upon us to determine the labor cost. It will always be upon us to determine the labor, the labor cost. That is the main concept that you should always grasp at any given point. I'm looking at the concept of, I'm looking at the concept of learning. So skills, efficiency, and time. That is very key concept that you must always grasp. And I'm going to give you a trick, my good students. At any given point, whenever we are handling the concept of learning curve, always aspire to grasp the concept right. Don't cram. Don't cram. I repeat again, whenever you're looking at the concept of learning curve, please don't cram. Don't cram. Don't cram. So, after we've looked at this concept, my good students, after we've looked at that concept, as of now, we can clearly now define what learning curve is. So you normally say that a learning curve theory applies to situations. Learning curve theory applies to situations where the workforce as a whole improves in efficiency with experience. I repeat again, you are saying that learning curve theory applies to situations where the workforce as a whole improves in efficiency with experience with with experience with experience full stop continuation you are seeing that the learning effect or learning curve effect describes the speeding up of a job with repeated performance describe the speeding up of a job with repeated performance with repeated performance so also for us to understand this concept very clearly take for example this case my good students take for example this case I'm having, I'm having, I'm having an employee. I'm having this person. You have been employed in an audit firm, assuming. We are looking at, it is the first day that you've employed, that you're employed probably, you've been employed in an audit firm. In this case, you're talking of an audit firm. You have been employed in an audit firm. Being employed in an audit firm, this is what will happen, right? During your first month, 
during your first month, you'll be given, say, a file, one file for verification. This one file doing the verification, maybe it can take you, say, like, say, 20 days in doing the verification for that. In your third month, as an employee in that audit firm, you'll find that one file you'll be taking, say, like, 12 days, for example, in doing the verification. In your fifth month, as an employee, in your fifth month, the same, same file, one file, maybe you'll be taking, say, like, uh, say, like, uh, eight days. On your eighth month, as an employee there, what will happen, you can do even two files within, say, like, even two files say within like uh, maybe talk of uh, six days or two files within four days so it reach a time that probably on uh, your first year on your first year you can do say like uh, these two files maybe within four days and there's no way probably you can do probably uh, you can take uh, probably lesser days than before. So what will happen here, my good students? What are you realizing? What are you able to note? In this case of ours, I believe we can clearly see that. I believe we can clearly see that when I was uh, very new, I was uh, taking 20 days. The moment I've started gaining experience, our days or time of performing this task will, will start probably to reduce. On the fifth month, at least I'm having a good experience. I'm doing eight days. It reach a point where by my experience, I'm very skillful now after the first year. Because of the experience that I've obtained, you'll find that also my time will also do it. My time will also reduce. And what will happen here? Our efficiency will also be increasing. <coughs> Excuse me. Our efficiency will also be will also be increasing so you'll find that uh, this is a, a very good uh, scenario whereby you can relate it with a learning curve concept the more experience or skill i become or the more experience i am the more efficient i'll be and the less time i'll be taking to perform to perform such tasks and that is exactly what we mentioned under the learning curve concept and that's sort of exactly what we mentioned under the learning curve concept so ideally you find that again in all this the factor that is going to be affected when it comes to cost ideally i'll be looking at what labor cost because i'm involving i'm involving the human resource and for human resource the compensation we normally talk of what the labor cost we normally talk of labor we normally talk of labor cost so ideally this is a concept behind this is a concept behind learning curve and we've given that definition i believe we have it then probably a good student will ask mwalimu what are some of the main costs to be affected by learning curve so that should take us to that should take us to this concept whereby i want us to look at costs affected by learning curve talk of costs affected by learning curve costs affected by learning curve so costs affected by learning curve 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 so amongst this cost will include the following number one as we mentioned we'll be talking of what labor cost Number one, we'll be talking of labor cost, very key concern, or a cost that is going to be affected by learning curve. Number two type of cost, we'll be talking of any variable cost or any cost, variable, any variable, OHD cost, variable, OHD cost, any variable, OHD cost, variable, overhead costs, if they vary with direct labor hours worked, if they vary if they vary with direct labor hours 
want. Variable overhead cost if they vary directly by hours worked. These are some of the main costs to be affected by learning curve. These are the main costs to be affected by learning curve. These are the main costs to be affected by learning curve. So my goals during this is very key for us to note. This is very key for us to for us to note. So at this point, at least you can clearly or you can confidently say that we have a concept of what? We have a concept of learning curve. We have a concept of learning curve. Now, after we've uh, talked of that, another concept that will also be very key for us to understand this concept very clearly is the concept to do with the equations and the learning curve. So ideally, we normally say that a learning curve is a non-linear equation. Learning curve is a non-linear equation with the form of learning curve is a non-linear cost equation in the, of the form of so this should take us to learning curve equations 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 this is what we'll be looking at learning curve equations this is what we'll be looking at I'll be talking of the following A we'll be talking of average time which for average time we normally talk of what? AX raised power B. This is average time. I'm going to explain it very well. I'm going to explain it very well. This is average time. Talk of total time. Y will always be equal to AX raised power B plus 1. So this is what? The formula to determine our total time. Breaking down this variable of hours, breaking down this variable of hours, whenever we are talking of y bar, where in this case, where y bar, this should give us what? The average time, total average time, this should give us our average time, average time or cost of production average time or cost of production average time or cost of production talk of y y this should give us our total time or cost of production total time or cost of production uh-huh Talk of A. A, this should give us our cumulative. And the keyword that I want us to grasp here is this point. We are talking of cumulative, my good students. So I want you to grasp this and grasp it very correctly. Whenever we are talking of A, ideally I'll be looking at what? Cumulative time. Cumulative, not per se cumulative, but uh, time or cost time or cost of producing time or cost of producing the first batch this is the word that i want us to grasp the first batch time or cost of producing the first batch or unit first batch slash unit first batch if possible underline this word first if possible, underline the word first. So we are saying that uh, for us to determine A, or rather our A, will always stand for time or cost of producing the first batch. 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 Now, after we've uh, talked of this, we can also talk of what? X. We can talk of 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 X. So ideally, when you are talking of X, my good students, what must always click at the back of our mind? So X, ideally, this should give us, and if possible, have this with another pen. We normally talk of cumulative, cumulative production, cumulative production, 
keyword we are looking at cumulative so x will always give us cumulative production and kindly i want you guys to underline the word cumulative because it is very key whenever i'm looking at the concept of learning curve so i want you guys to underline the word cumulative production because that is very key uh -huh. as we continue with this that should take us to b whenever we're talking of b what will we be looking at so talk of our b here talk of our b so b should give us b should give us what is known as what learning index b should give us what is known as learning index learning index that is what should give uh, that will be our b learning index learning index and to determine this learning index and to determine this learning index and to determine this learning index we will be talking of log r r ideally this is a learning rate we divide by log 2 that should give us our learning index that should give us our learning index we are talking of log r we divide by log 2 we divide by log 2 that should give us our learning index that should give us our learning index so trust you me my good students if we are able to master this concept and i'm going to show you also at what point are you supposed or at what time are you supposed to use the average time and at what point will our total time be very effective so this is very key so the first step in understanding the concept of learning curve first of all you've said i should understand this is the concept ideally behind what uh, this is the concept ideally of time efficiency and skills or experience then we've also mentioned that the major costs to be affected by learning curve is what labor cost is a labor cost and also we've gone ahead and say that learning curve ideally is a non-linear equation in the form of these two whereby we are talking of average time and also we are talking of what total time it is very key for us to grasp this concept it is very key for us to grasp this concept so after we've looked at this foundation of learning curve my good students i want us now to proceed and look at what point will it be ideal at what point will it be ideal for us to use what at what point will it be ideal for us to use for us to use the average time and at what point will it be ideal for us to use what the total time so this should take us to a concept known as learning curve with doubling effect so we are talking of this should take us to this concept known as uh, the learning curve with a doubling effect learning curve with doubling effect so in this case we are talking of a learning curve with doubling effect by the way before we go to that concept of learning curve and the doubling effect if we are told now to demonstrate a learning curve using a curve how will it look like that's also a very key concept that we can also talk about even before we go to look at a learning curve with the doubling effect in the event that you are told to demonstrate the concept of a learning curve using a curve how can we do that so this should always be our curve in this case we'll be looking at this case i'm having we can uh, talk of uh, so this should be our this should be our learning curve So I'm looking at our learning curve here. So take this to be our time. Take this to be our time and take this to be our production. 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 So looking at this case, maybe we can have it here. Maybe I'm having say like a 
I'll just take any figures in those students. We'll just take any figures here. We'll just take any figures here. So, uh, looking at uh, this graph, looking at this graph, maybe I'm having, say, like, 100 units here. 200, 300, 400, 500. This is in units, okay? Then you are talking of, say, like, 10 here. We are talking of 20, 30, 40. We are talking of 50. And in this case, I should be talking of this curve here. Kindly check it out well. Kindly check it out well. This to be our curve. This to be our curve. So, I should be having it as a... Uh, in this case, I should be having it actually. So, looking at this curve, this is what will be happening. Term this as our T1. T1 top of our P1, production, P1, right? Then you should take this component here. T2 and uh, P2. Uh-huh. Then it will reach a point probably where I should be having that case. So, ideally explaining the concept of learning curve now, my good student using a graph, explaining the concept of learning curve using our graph, this is how it will be. This is how it will be. You will find that uh, when I'm very new in a certain task, I'll be taking a lot of time where my production will be very low. I gain experience. My time will reduce, our production will increase. I gain more experience. Our time will be reducing, our production will do what will increase. But it will reach a level whereby this learning will stop. It will reach a point where by this learning will stop. And the point where learning will stop, we'll find that I'll be having it at a constant rate all through. I'll be having it at a constant rate all through. So at this point, you'll find that my learning, this is where my learning has stopped. Right? This is where my learning has stopped. I can't be more efficient than that. I can't be more efficient than that. So you'll find that at this level, my learning will, my learning will stop. My learning will stop. So this is a concept of a learning curve, explaining it using what? Using a using a graph. Using a using a graph. And it is very key for us to always master these points because remember it will always guide us at any given point i'm dealing with the concept of learning curve at any given point i'm dealing with the concept of learning curve so after we have uh, talked of that after we have uh, talked of that after we have uh, talked of that probably another concept that we can also look at now is that concept that we are talking about the learning curve and the doubling effect learning curve and the doubling effect and ideally, this is a concept where my good students will find that average time will come in very well. The concept of average time will come in very, very well. So, at this point, I want us to go to that concept. I want us to go to that concept now and look at it. I want us to go at that, to look at that concept right now. Right now. So, I think that is okay. So we want us, uh, we want, uh, want us to look at uh, this concept where we are terming it as a learning curve and a doubling effect. Learning curve, learning curve and uh, doubling effect. Learning curve and uh, doubling effect. Learning curve and uh, the doubling effect. Learning curve and the doubling effect. Probably a person will ask Molimu why are you using the doubling effect? 
Why are you saying that? We are talking of the doubling effect. What do we mean at this point? What do we mean? At any given point, I'll be looking at this concept of a learning curve in the doubling effect. What must always click at the back of our mind? So ideally, we normally say that uh, in this case, of course, you're also going to explain it to the graph. We normally say that uh, the learning curve model, the learning curve model, this for those who are writing, and it's very important for you to put this down by the way. We normally say that uh, the learning curve model is based on the assumption that the average cost or average time of production decreases by a constant percentage decreases by a constant percentage when cumulative production doubles. I repeat you are saying that the learning curve model is based on the assumption that the average cost or average time of production that the average cost or average time of production decreases decreases by a constant percentage when cumulative production doubles. It decreases by a constant percentage when cumulative production doubles. When cumulative production doubles. When cumulative production doubles. So, we normally say that uh, at any given point, whenever I'm looking at uh, the learning curve concept and the doubling effect is that if our production doubles, also our time will tend to do what? Will tend to decrease. Our average time will be decreasing at a constant, at a constant rate, at a constant rate. Say for example, take this case, say for example, take this case, my good students, say for example, take this case, uh, where we have, allow me to erase here, allow me to erase here, because I know we have this concept. And uh, of course, just explaining it here, whenever I'm having a doubling effect, you'll find that as accumulative production doubles, also, our average time will be decreasing. Our average time will be decreasing. So allow me to erase it here. And we are looking at the concept learning curve and the doubling effect. Learning curve and the doubling effect. So this will be the impact. This will be the impact. Take for example this scenario whereby you are talking of our cumulative production. We are talking of our cumulative production. We are talking of our cumulative production. We are looking at our learning rate. We are looking at our learning rate. We are talking of maybe our average time. Average time. We are talking of our average time. We are talking of our average time. So this is what you are saying, that in the event that I'm having a cumulative production doubling, say I'm having one, two, four, eight, 16. Learning rate, assuming in this case I'm given a figure of, say, learning rate in this case, maybe I'm given, say, like, uh, talk of uh, 80%. Assuming learning rate, I'm given 80%. So we are saying that whenever I'm having the concept of the doubling effect, our time will be decreasing, time or cost will be decreasing at a constant rate. That means that, assuming in this case maybe I'm having our average time say to be, I'm having our average time say to be like a uh, hundred, our average time to be a hundred. If I want to determine the average time of producing the second unit or the second batch, what you are going to do, we are going to take, we are going to take, we are going to take a hundred we multiply by that percentage, which is 0.8, 80%. That should give us how much? That should give us average time of 100 by 0.8. I know very well it should give us roughly like 80. So it should be talking of roughly like 80 here. Yeah? This is 80. Uh huh. How will you determine now the average time of producing this, the other batch, the next batch? This is what we'll be doing. I'm going to take now here 80. We are going to take 80 here. We multiply by 0 0.8. That should give us 80 by 0 0.8 to give us 64. So that should give us 64. Uh-huh. 
The other point I should be talking of, 64, we divide by 0 0.8, that should give us how much Germany? That should give us 64 by 0 0.8, to give me a figure of 51.2. 51.2. Uh -huh. Then, what about the other point? To determine now the time taken, the average time of producing the 16 uh, batch, batches I should be talking of, that should be 51.2 by 0 0.8, the learning rate. So that should give us by 0 0.8, to give us a figure for much, 4 or 9, to give us 40.96, to give us 40.96. 40.96 so ideally my good student this is how the average or the doubling effect normally affects our data that is how the concept of doubling effect will always affect our data will always affect our data so I'm having that case then probably in this event assuming that you are not given Assuming you are not given the learning rate, but you are given the average time, how will you determine how will you determine your learning rate? So to determine the learning rate if not given, to determine the learning rate if not given, this is what you are going to do, my good students. I'll always be taking our T2. We divide by our T1. We multiply by what? A hundred. That is what we'll be having as our learning rate. Like in this event, assuming that you aren't given the learning rate, but we are given our average time. We are given our average time. Assuming we weren't given the learning rate, but we are given our average time. How will we have obtained the learning rate? This is how we will have done it. We'll be taking our T2. Our T2 in this case should be having 80. We divide by our T1, which in this case I'm having 100. Then you multiply by 100. I'm definitely sure that should give us what? 80%. We can also do it with this other case. Assuming now our, I'm looking at uh, 80 and 64. So my T1 in this case, I should be, our T2 in this case, I should be looking of what? 64. We divide by 80 times 100. So I'm 100% sure that should also give us what? 80%. So you'll find that it is constant. And what you realize, what you realize at this point is that what is happening to our average time, my good students? Yeah? What is happening to our average time? If our cumulative production doubles, what is happening to our average time? You'll find that also our average time will tend to do what? To reduce. Our average time will also be reducing. Our average time will also be reducing. And that's a very important concept that we must always have at the back of our mind whenever we are talking of what? Learning curve concept. Whenever we are talking of learning curve concept, that is a very important point that you must always be having at the back of our mind, at the back of our mind, at the back of our mind. Now, after we've looked at that case, assuming in this case, my good students, you are given, assuming in this case, you are given the aspect of total time. That this is also another scenario that can also be uh, looked at. Assuming we are given total time and I'm not given our average time how will we have determined our average time assuming that in this case you're given our total time right I'm given our total time and I'm not given our average time I'm not given our average time so that probably at this point maybe I'm given say like a hundred maybe I'm given say like 160 for example on the other case maybe you can talk of maybe I'm given a figure of how that should be that should be maybe 256 here. Maybe talk of uh, the other point. Maybe I'm given 409. Say I'm also given, say like, uh, that should be 40.
So assuming that I was given that data, assuming that I'm given our total time and I'm not given our average time, assuming I'm given my total time and I'm not given our average time, how will we determine our average time? Assuming that I'm given a total time and I'm not given the average time, because in this case the examiner can decide that, in this case, this is how the examiner can decide. Right? Believing that you already have this. I want us to look at this other scenario, right? In this case, the examiner can decide to give us our total time. We don't have a rate there. We don't have a rate there. So, you are given that data only. You are given the total time or cumulative time. Then the examiner requires you to determine, the examiner will require you to determine, the examiner will require you to determine the component of learning rate. You are asked to determine the learning rate. How will you go about determining your learning rate? How will you go about determining your learning rate? I know I am on the dark just a few seconds then we'll be back so we are saying that uh, in this case you're given that data my good students you're given that data and here the examiner wants you to determine the examiner wants you to determine the examiner wants you to determine wants you to determine the component examiner wants you to determine the component of what the component of rate the component of rate how will you go how are you going to work it out so given such a scenario my good students and you are required to determine the component of rate how will you go about this this will be simple because mark it very correctly and kindly if you have a question please ask at this point because it is very important for us to grasp this concept here. <clears throat> so, if you're not given our learning rate, you're given only the total time. And the examiner wants you to determine the learning rate. What would be the procedure? So, to determine our average time I'll be taking, to determine our average time first of all, I'll be taking our total or cumulative time we divide by our cumulative units 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 so in this case this is what we are going to do i'll be taking a hundred we divide by one right these are cumulative units so you should be having a hundred here uh-huh on this uh, second uh, level of production, the second batch of second units, I should be talking of 160, we divide by 2 to give us 80 here. Uh -huh. The other point, we should be talking of 256, we divide by 4 to give us 64. Uh -huh. Then, talk of the other case, we should be talking of 409, we divide by 8 to give us 51. The other point I should be looking of 655 divide by 16 to give us how much? 41. That should give us 41. So this is how we have determined our what? Our average time, right? Remember you are only given total time and you are asked to determine our learning rate. So we are going to start by, first of all, determining our average time. Then the moment I'm having my time, and in this case I'm given the concept of the doubling effect, our units were doubling, cumulative production was doubling. So in this case, this is how I can determine our learning rate, right? Because we've said to determine our learning rate, if we have our average time, I'll be talking of T2, we divide by T1, times what? Times 100. So therefore, in our case, we can talk of 80 divided by 100 times 100. Definitely, I'm going to get 80%. So we've gone back to the 80%. We've gone back to the 80%. And that is how I can determine the learning rate if I'm not, if I'm not given. If I'm not given, if I'm not given. So basically, this is the main concept. Because also, if you find, if you can also do 64, 
64 maybe divide by 80 times 100 it should take us close to 80 right 64 divided by 80 that should give us of course the 80 80 percent 80 percent so this is a very key concept my good student that at least we have learned at any given point i'm talking of what i'm talking of learning curve and remember learning curve is very important more so when you are doing advanced management learning curve is very very important learning curve is very very important now after we are able to hack that one right in this case also a concept that i'll always want you guys to always have at the back of your mind anytime i am dealing with learning curve kindly i want you guys to always have this concept at the back of your mind i want you guys to always have this concept at the back of your mind so this is how we are going to work it out this is how we are going to work it out this is how we are going to work it out I want us to differentiate between these two statements. I want us to differentiate between these two, between these two, two statements. Where in this statement I'm talking of, say like uh, determine, determine the total time, determine the total time of producing eight batches or eight units, eight batches or units, right? Then we also have this other scenario whereby we are talking of determining the same, same case, determine the total time of producing the eighth batch or units. What is the difference? What is the difference between the two statements? What's the difference between the two statements? What's the difference between the two statements? What is the difference between these two statements? Determine the total time of producing eight batches or units. Then I'm also having determine the total time of producing the eighth batch. Determine the total cost of producing the eighth batch. Determine the total cost of producing eight batches. What is the difference? You'll find that at this point, what I'll be working on is kind of a mapping 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 batches or 8 units. What about the 8th batch? The 8th batch, ideally, you can see here very clearly that this is, this is what I'll be looking at. This is what I'll be looking at. This is what I'll be looking at. I should be having this case, I should be having this case, I should be having this case. I'm looking at the 8th batch. So to determine the 8th batch, to determine the 8th batch, it means that I should be having 7. So this time here, the time or cost, this time or cost between 7 and 8 is what I'm requested to determine here. This time here, remember, this gap here between 7 and 8. That's what the examiner wants us to determine. The 8th batch. So at this point, I'll be looking at only that one unit. I'll be looking at only that one unit. I'll be looking at only that one unit. I'll be looking at only that one, that one unit, that one unit. So in such an event, how are you going to work it out? In such an event, how are you going to work it out? Allow me to raise here because I know we have all these points. Allow me to raise there. So given such a case, my good students, how are you going to work it out? Because as I've, we've said, we should differentiate between these two terms, right? Eight batches and what? The eighth batch. Correct. So this is what you are going to do. This is what you are going to do, right? I want us to determine that cost. So how will I determine, first of all, the cumulative time of producing eight batches? We have our formula there. We have our formula there. And having mentioned that one, we should be talking of y is equal to a x b plus 1, which you have it there. That should be your total time. Y. Remember, we are looking at what? Y. Total time of producing what? Our production. 
And in this case, the first thing I'm looking at is what? Eight batches. The first thing that I'm looking at is what? Is eight batches. How are we going to work out these eight batches? How are we going to work out these eight batches? So for eight batches, for eight batches, you are going to work it out like this. I should be having, I should be having, I should be having this point. My cumulative production is eight batches. So I should be talking of Y to be equal to what? A. Time or cost of producing the first unit. Time or cost of producing the first unit. And do we have that? We have the time here. We have the time here. We have the time here. As you've noted that the time of producing the first batch ideally, they're the same average and total. Average and total. So I should be talking of a hundred. We multiply by what? We multiply by our cumulative production. I'm looking at eight batches. I'm looking at eight batches. So I should be having by eight. Raised to power what? B raised to power B plus 1. And recall, what did you say B is? B, if you can recall, I can also remind you, B, we said, is a learning index. And to determine learning index, you should be talking of log R. We divide it by log. We divide by log 2. My learning rate here is what? In our case, our learning rate is 80%. So you should be talking of log 0.8. We divide by log 2. That should give us a figure of how much my two students. Log 8, we divide it by log 2. That, if we divide by log 2, that should give us how much? Quickly, we can get a figure of how much? Log 0 0.8, we divide by log 2. In that case, I'm seeing, I'm having, uh, this should be negative 0 0.3. Two one nine, right? So therefore, I should be talking of B, which is negative zero point three two one nine plus what? Plus one. That should give us how many hours? That should give us how many hours? So I should be talking of first of all, always advisable. We start by working out this one, negative. 0 0.3219 plus 1 that is 8 raised to power answer times 100 so in that case I'm seeing I'm having a figure of how much 409 409.6 409.6 409.6 and that is exact figure that you are getting here right that's the same, almost same, same figure that you are getting, that you are getting at this point, that you are getting at that point, that you are getting at that point. So that is how we can determine total time of producing eight batches. What about the eighth batch? What about the eighth batch? That one unit there, that one unit there. How are we going to determine that? To determine that, we should be talking of the following. I should be talking of y is equal to what? A will not change, 100, times what? 7, raised power negative 0 0.3219 plus 1. So that should give us a figure for much. That should give us a figure for much, my co-students. This is, of course, plus 1. So I should be talking of a figure of negative 0 0.3219, of course, plus 1. In that case, that should be 7 raised to our answer times 100 to give us a figure of 374.2. 374.2. 2. So, given that, I can clearly and comfortably determine this one unit there. I can clearly and comfortably determine that one unit there so in this case i should be talking of this difference here the one unit that we want to determine that one unit so therefore i should be talking of 409.6 minus answer so i should be having of i should be talking of 35 here right 
35 mean hours 35.4 35.4 35.4 so that is a very simple way of how I can differentiate between the two and remember this level the examiner many a times will be telling us the aspect of the eighth batch maybe you are given cumulative production so it's upon you to look at it at, the, at that point a third point is our learning curve probably concept uh, a third point is our learning curve probably uh, probably maybe it sees it a third point will our learning curve sees and from that point probably our cost will be constant so it will just be upon you to determine that where our learning curve is seizing, the time or cost where our learning curve is seizing, which will be constant to all to all the other production that we are going to be produced after the learning curve has, has stopped. Now, after looking at this case, my good students, I believe we should be very now very uh, uh, comfortable in handling any question when it comes to learning curve, because also when you are told, assuming if you are told to determine the average time, assuming the average time of producing, say four batches. How do you determine that average time? See so our formula here. A, which you know very well that our A is 100. We multiply by, I'm looking at the average time of producing, 4 batches. So it should be having by 4 raised to our negative 0 0.3219. Of course, plus 1. In that case, how much should we be having? How much should we be having? It should be having negative 0 0.3219. Of course, plus 1 raised to our that should be uh, 4 raised to our answer times 100. So that should give me a figure of how much? That should give us a figure of uh, that is a total time. And we want our average. So our average just remove uh, because if you get the total time, you'll find that you're getting exactly to 56. And if you are to get our average time, I should be having 4 raised to our negative 0 0.3219 times 100. I'm having a figure of 64. It has taken us back to, to that point. So remember all these points. So long as you have the concept right, it will be very easy for us to handle any question when it comes to learning curve, when it comes to learning curve. So I want you guys to join me in the next class whereby I want us to look at a whole question for learning curve. It will really open our minds wide to understand all these concepts. So kindly join me in the next session whereby you are going to handle a full question for learning curve to open our mind wide. To this juncture, thank you so much and let us meet in our next session.